quote, sexual relations are properly reserved to marriage between one man and one woman. It, you know, it doesn't say that they had to just have premarital sex with the person that they're now with, that if it's a married couple and the fellow learns that the, the husband or wife had previously uh, uh, shacked up with somebody or had a sexual relationship with somebody, that would be protected by the section of the act. Governor, can you tell us why you signed the bill? Sure, because I think it's a good bill. I think it protects the religious freedom of people who have deeply held religious beliefs, and um, so did the legislature, and so did the majority of the people of the state of Mississippi, so we signed it in law. It's not good law. Uh, it might be good morals, but you can't write all of that into law. Ed Pittman is a retired chief justice of the state Supreme Court. He says there are problems with the bill's wording. Uh, when you say sexual relations are properly reserved to such a marriage yeah, okay let's say we agree with that but what does that do nothing Pittman, who also spent time in the legislature thinks the bill is a waste of lawmakers time let's say somebody goes to buy condoms and they say well you know i'm catholic i can't sell those to you you know you go to buy a piece of ham or some pork and somebody says i'm muslim i can't sell you pork products you know like, how far does this go practically speaking it's not practical you, you can't enforce it. Um, the, the Constitution of the United States won't let you enforce it first. Secondly, how can you prove all of this? Now, again, I want to emphasize that there are a lot of unknowns about what this new law will mean. Experts say it not only could affect gay and lesbian couples who want to get married, but a heterosexual couple who may have had sex before marriage. One of the implications, of course, down the road, of course, this law takes effect July 1st, a lot of implications about whether it will even see the light of day because of all the questions about whether it's even constitutional. For now, we're live at the state capitol. Ross Adams, 16, WAPT News. Ross, thank you. And there's plenty of reaction for the gay community. After the governor signed that bill, 16 WAPT's Ali Ware reports, one new billboard is getting a lot of attention. This billboard on High Street is getting a lot of attention. It's a picture of Jesus seemingly objecting to Mississippi's new religious freedom law. That internet meme has been going around for years, but it certainly got a, a fresh breath of life yesterday. The billboard says, quote, I said I hate figs and love thy neighbor. That's a reference to a Bible passage where Jesus curses a fig tree. But now the play on words is grabbing people's attention. Say no to HB. With the fallout over our new law. It come from the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. So it's true, right? Uh, I can't dispute that. Oh, I'm sure that a lot of people will be upset about it, but you know, those same people should be upset about lawmakers passing legislation and the governor signing a bill into law uh, that kind of misrepresents what Christianity is all about. God is the only person that should have the judgment not man. The owner of Campbell's Bakery says he is against the law that allows businesses like his to deny service to gay couples. I am not called to discriminate and I'm not called to Christian love for only those who love me. Um, Mark says that as well. Matt Friedman is a professor at the Wesley Biblical Seminary. He says he agrees with the words on the billboard, but he says the message is confused. What's your first reaction to this? Well, I think Jesus probably loves figs and he wants us to love them too. Uh, about love thy neighbor, I think it's a great point. But that doesn't mean that if uh, the Bible teaches people are living in sin, we just look right past that. We want to help people out of that sin. This is what that bill is all about, uh, that honest uh, people who have a legitimate objection to what's going on, uh, a, a religious objection, uh, have uh, a, a course of action. We reached out to the organization that bought the billboard, plantingpeace.org. They were not available for comment. In Jackson, Alleyware, 16 WAPT News. Minnesota has become the latest state to ban state employees travel to Mississippi. Others include New York, Vermont, Washington State, and the city of Atlanta. Washington, D.C. is considering an official travel ban to any state with anti-gay laws. Several major Mississippi companies, including Tyson, Nissan, Toyota, and Ingalls, have also expressed opposition to the law. A similar law in North Carolina cost that state 400 jobs when PayPal pulled out of that state. 
The religious objection law trending on social media as well. Presidential candidate Hillary Clinton tweeted, refusing to serve LGBT people because of who they are is discrimination and a story. And singer and Mississippi native Lance Bass tweeted, way to go, Phil Bryant, you did it, congrats. And he shared this picture of a sign reading, entering Mississippi, please turn your clocks back 200 years. A woman who wants strip club billboards taken down found some support on the Jackson City Council. As you come into the city of Jackson, you're welcomed by one of those signs out there on I-55 South. Simone saying she agrees with Marla Jonas. She told council members the billboards on I-55 and I-20, like the ones you see here, are nothing more than porn. She believes it violates the city's ordinance and sends the wrong message to kids. And when they see the signs that we drive up and down the highway every day, they're looking at these signs and these women are naked and their thoughts are, oh, well, it's okay if I swing from a pole because the city has the signs up, so this is an endorsement that it's okay. And it's never okay. It will never be okay if the signs need to come down. City leaders say the strip club that posted the signs are protected by First Amendment rights to free speech. A one-year-old is on life support after a family friend accidentally ran over the child with his truck. It happened around 8.30 last night on Cumberland Road east of Vicksburg. Authorities tell us the driver was visiting with the little girl's family. When he started to leave, he backed over the girl. Paramedics airlifted her to Batson. No charges have been filed. One of the escaped Florida fugitives back behind bars tonight, all thanks to one quick thinking cabbie. A deluxe cab company driver says he got a call around 5 a.m. from a woman saying she needed someone to pick up her husband in Pelahatchee. She was in another state. Well, since that call seemed a little strange, the cab driver called the sheriff who sent him a picture of the escapee, James Banks. I said, I don't know if this your man, but I'm finna get him. Just drive real slow. We'll catch up with you. Drive slow. And that's exactly what happened. The driver picked up Banks in the 4800 block of 2nd Street in Pelahatchie. He drove just a few blocks before Rankin County Sheriff's deputies caught up and arrested him. And Banks made his first court appearance this afternoon. So, you ready to go back to Florida? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Banks accepted extradition back to Florida today in Rankin County Court. Authorities say Banks and Michael Rotuno escaped from a prison van in Florida early Monday, then ran from a Rankin County deputy trying to stop their car that night. Rotuno's still on the run now. Police last spotted him in a truck they believe he stole in Pelahatchie in Texas Tuesday. But what happens after convicted criminals get out of jail? That's the issue the city's crime task force dealt with today. 16 WAPT's and Paul.